Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, or whenever you happen to be listening to this. Welcome to the Film Realist Podcast, the film and TV podcast from a complete nobody that's hopefully for somebody. The long-awaited guest appearance of the biggest fan of Project S X and host of Podcast X, Ben Kendrick. That's right. I'm here. We made it happen after years. My finally... pestering. I apologize. Yeah. Can I cur- can I curse on this podcast or are you PG- like? I'll edit it out, so it's fine. Okay. All right. I will I will refrain then. I will refrain. You may. It'll just be beeped out. That's fine. Is, I will well, yeah, I, I will makes refrain. It funnier. Yeah, that's true. Well, beep it beep 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 beep. No, it's good to be here. I mean, I mean, and what a what a momentous film for us to talk about. It's true. I was going to make a, a former website review comment, and I figured Rob already beat me to the joke on Twitter. Yeah. So it's if you know you know yeah so that's it that's not required that's it. yeah but we are of course you've teased it we are reviewing transformers rise of the beasts the theatrical return of transformers which was we were talking about how f- long ago things have been bumblebee came out in 2018 that's so crazy to me yeah like i when i like i felt like bumble i know it didn't perform like fantastically at the box office and everything but i feel like I don't know. I feel like they could have like launched out of that with like more momentum than sort of waiting for this thing. But but we, you know, we can kind I mean, of talk about it in generals, yeah. I guess, for for Rise of the Beasts. And this is not a spoiler. There will be time codes in the description if you have not seen it yet. You may have seen Spider-Verse again, as the box office numbers would reflect. Sp- Across the Spider-Verse did have a better Sunday domestically than Rise of the Beast, yeah. which I found really interesting because Bumblebee was and wasn't a reboot. There are things yeah. that are clearly different <clears throat> that they yeah. don't address. The most obvious would be, and if you are seeing a clip, I have the Transformers Rise of the Beast poster to my left, right on camera. So it's legible. Um, is that That's right. it's the Gen 1 designs. <laughs> yeah. Which were never yeah. a part of the Bay films remotely. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, there's there is a lot to talk about in spoilers. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the non-spoiler review generalities of the film. Ben, you love Transformers. I do. I think more than anybody that I know. Yep, probably. And the the my fandom goes back to being a child of the 90s, the Beast Wars. I tweeted this out. This is my Optimus Primal. Uh, yes, yes. And my first version of Gen 1 Optimus Prime. He's printed Dope. backwards. <laughs> Dope. <laughs> Both of which are in Beast Wars. But so you liked Bumblebee. I didn't even see that in theaters. So leading into this, like, were you excited? Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. Like, I mean, you alluded to my history with this franchise. Like, when the first one came out, it was actually the first press screening I ever got to go to. And it was before I went to grad school, which is where I met Kofi and I got involved in this whole thing. So I was actually just like, like a regular old Joe who happened to like, it's actually really funny. And I've never told this story, but I was at a, at an old Chicago on Pearl street mall in Boulder, Colorado, when I was working in Boulder as a youth director and on the hostess stand was like a stack of movie tickets to go see a press screening of, like the original Transformers movie or the, you know, the first Bay film. And I was like a huge Transformers fan. I was excited about the movie and I stole two of these tickets from the hostess stand <laughs> and like, <laughs> and just, you know, it was the kind of thing back then it was before COVID. So the press screenings were like pretty crazy. And if you were like, you weren't pressed, you had to line up. So I lined up with my girlfriend for like three hours. This was all before I even moved to New York, got to see Transformers on the big screen at a press screening, like a week early. And I, cried like when the Autobots are coming down after Bumblebee signals them and you know Optimus Prime transforms for the first time and all that when and, we used yeah. to see Optimus Prime transform exactly yeah instead of just whirly gig yeah, yeah. like uh quickie things that he does mm-hmm. now but um and yeah and I don't know I mean I I kind of was so won over by that movie just out of nostalgia I think and also I mean I still think the first one is kind of a fun self-contained sort of like you know boy in his car type film and that's sort of what bumblebee i think got got right and sort of like it picked back up on that 
I but, agree uh, with that because I think the yeah. first <laughs> film gets lumped in with the others. It's a weird comparison, yeah. but it's similar to Iron Man where the things that worked for the first film, the yeah. more you see them do it over and over again, you're like, was yes. the first one as good? But it, yeah. uh, like, I think most people would would positively say, yeah, the bones were right. That's why it yeah. worked. Exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like the Jurassic Park films or something too, another franchise that I'm a big fan of. Like, you know, after a while, just seeing the T-Rex isn't as interesting as like it having to fight another giant dinosaur or something like that in order for that Compelling to be Telling characters, so, good writing. Those things are exactly. important. Yeah, exactly. Imagine. But yeah, so you were asking about Bumblebee. I I was excited for Bumblebee. I did see that one in theaters. I thought it was a good sort of resurgence of, of the franchise and a good sort of reset after. I get a lot of crap for liking Age of Extinction just because I was a bit biased because of the Dinobots and I liked kind of the Optimus Prime was... It's almost kind of like an Optimus Prime origin story because he's, you know, like out of commission and Mark Wahlberg sort of rediscovers him and he's kind of getting his his robot life back together. But I, I can recognize that that film isn't great. Um, you know, he's you hit know, rock just... bottom when he looks like the Peterbilt from the cartoon. Exactly. That's exactly it. <laughs> A rusty so, piece of crap. Yeah. So, but I mean, I objectively, I was on the set for last night and genuinely kind of despised that movie at almost every level. Like it kind of, I finally sort of caught up with everybody else, I think, where it was like, okay, the nostalgia isn't enough for me anymore. This is just off the rails and like, doesn't make sense. And the direction they're going is not interesting and is like, you know, like what is the earth anymore? If it can just be kind of ripped to shreds like that movie and then kind of like put back together or something. Can you settle um, a debate for me then? Because you've expressed your concern. Rob and I, mutual friend of ours, I've debated as to what is the worst Transformers film. I say uh, it's yeah. The Last Night. I think he it says is the Revenge last. of the Fallen. I mean, Revenge of the Fallen has racist robots and like other things about it that are bad and ridiculous, like the Council of Primes and all that stuff, the way that that was done and killing Optimus. But I mean, you know, and Resur- it's like it kind of undoes a lot of the interesting stuff that it did. And there's a lot of stupid. I mean, I'm thinking now about more dumb things like Devastator's balls and stuff True. like that but it hey, still Bumblebee has some peed of... on a guy in the first one yes absolutely exactly right like the humor was always this, this way but i think like the second one it has that awesome forest fight between like and that fight in imax and like i bought an imax version blu-ray of that so like when it's on my tv it's like snyder cut you know like proportions and dimensions and stuff and it still looks awesome so like you know I give it a kind of a pass because of the writer's strike and who knows what it would have been if they had, you know, hadn't sort of pressed forward with it. I, I mean, racist robots, all that stuff, you know, I, I acknowledge its faults there, but I, I think the last one is just the one where it's kind of, it was so off the rails. And so like, I just, I, it, like nothing at stakes. It didn't make sense anymore. And like I say that as someone who was on set and got to see like what Bay was doing and some of the really like amazing stunt work and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I would say it's the last one. I still think that's the worst one. It's the one that killed my enthusiasm for the franchise, but it's so long. liked Bumblebee going into this one. I was excited, but I was never a huge beast wars person. That like, was kind of like, by that point I was a little bit older and I was, I don't know, probably playing basketball and stuff and super into Shaquille O'Neal or something. But like, I, um, but you know, like I was, I really felt like coming out of Bumblebee they kind of did get their creative juices back. And I like, I wasn't as excited for this as I was for the flash or a couple other things that I was really curious about seeing, but I was definitely looking forward to it. And like, I think in the lead up the days, like leading up to the press screening and like talking to my friend who I was going to take to the movie. And then that day I was like working and I was finding myself kind of like pretty excited to like get to the theater. I think I was just kind of like low key, like, not engaging with the hype for this one, but my, the little kid in me was still like ready to see Optimus Prime, you know, kick butt and like see the Maximals and see what they did with that and see where they take it. So I was excited. It'd probably have been in my like maybe top five for the summer, but it was not my number one most anticipated film of the summer or anything like that. I desperately wanted to be excited given you talked about the Dinobots in age of extinction 
one of the running jokes among my friend group is I was born in the wrong decade because of all the things I like from the 80s. Yeah. I would say most of the stuff that I did like growing up has been made better now. Yeah. Uh, examples being like Voltron Legendary Defender or Masters of the Universe Revelations, which was right. Had yeah. no right to be that good. Yes. 100%. But loved Beast Wars. That was my first exposure to Transformers. And I just did not want them to be treated the way the Dinobots were in <laughs> yes. Age of Extinction. Yeah. And without getting into spoilers, uh, I don't think they are. Yep. But ultimately, I think we can get into general feelings. I thought the movie was fine. I think it's a better version of the Bay framework yes. while yeah. still being attached to things that didn't work in the Bay films, which I find yeah. very strange. There was something we are going to talk about in spoilers that is very different from something they did not actively do, specifically Paramount. Yep. And I think one of the things I was most excited about and I think worked was Stephen Capel Jr. made Creed 2, a film I really like and helped yeah. establish a unique take on what would have been the eighth Rocky film if you include all of them together. Yep. So the trailers for this were coherent. That was a step in the right direction. And I can safely report that the visuals <laughs> and the use of the Transformers in this film, you can understand what happens, which is sadly a step in the right direction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. Like I'm, it's it, it for me, my whole reaction was so tepid and I'm disappointed by that fact. Yeah. I think like, Oh, you know, a way of saying it without like spoiling anything, the way that I've been talking about it is it's not Beast Wars, right? No. It really is Rise of the Beast. It's like, and in a way that's more like respectful and developed than like you were saying, the Dinobots. I mean, the Dinobots, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the trailer of Optimus Prime riding Grimlock was the coolest thing about the Dinobots. And then I, you know, when you see the movie, it's like you realize, oh, that happens in the last five seconds of the movie, basically, right? Like, mm -hmm. this is definitely not that. They're fleshed out. At least a few of them are fleshed out characters that you kind of grow to care about. And like, you know, you understand their motivations and you understand kind of where they fit in everything. But they're also, this is still a, like, it's a mirage movie, really, more than anything uh -huh. else. But with kind of like a, like a Optimus Prime, you know, like sort of maybe like the second Transformers movie, which was, we've said already is, wasn't great, but it's like, that's how much Prime you get. And that's how much, you know, of like another kind of fun comic relief character you get. But yeah, that, I, I mean, for me, it worked because G1 Optimus and stuff is like where my heart is, but and I always I was a fan of Mirage too as a kid, and they never really did much with that character in the in the Bay movies in any meaningful way. I think if I remember correctly, I think he's in one, but it's like he's like a throwaway character. I could be wrong about that because there's I know RC was like a throwaway character too, so I can't remember. RC is in two, <laughs> but she's three bikes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it does it, and she's kind of doing a Mirage thing too with like the rider on her and stuff, mm -hmm. like. But the uh, like holographic writer, but I'm trying to remember if Mirage was in one or not. But according it, to the wiki, Mirage has not appeared in a film until okay. now. So it's just Wheeljack then that they kind of like redo here. Yeah, um, basically. But yeah, voiced by Danny Rojas from yeah, Dead which Lasso. is so so <laughs> weird, but but worked in some ways. But but yeah, so for me, I mean, you know, I got to see Optimus Prime do a lot of cool stuff. I dug the Mirage stuff. I dug kind of, yeah, a very crazy thing that they do in the third act that sort of actually worked for me that I couldn't believe worked for me. And then um, I did like the human characters this time more, not more than Haley They're Steinfeld. They're significantly more compelling, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think like Haley Steinfeld did a good job in the movie she was in, but like her motivations were kind of like, you know, my I'm in this sort of like weird family and I don't know how I fit in, you know, school and like I have choke whenever I you know, think about doing this high dive thing. It's not like, whereas like Noah's character is, I mean, certainly the stakes are much higher for him with, you know, things that his family is going through as well as like his backstory and him trying to kind of like realize his full potential. And, you know, I think, I think both of the two main human leads were, were like really solid in that capacity. Like they were sympathetic and they weren't like, I don't know, 
you know, they weren't like Mark Wahlberg, who's a mechanic who turns out to be like a superhero, you know, or something. It's like, I sort of believe the Cybertronian coat of arms. Exactly. Like, yeah, (laughs) just doesn't make any sense. But, but I did. Yeah. I mean, I dug all that too. I thought all that worked really well. And I, the other thing that I said about the film was that it's the most like an animated Transformers cartoon as any of them have been. And the reason is because you really only, there's really only like six living, breathing humans that have lines in the movie. So like you really do have scenes where there's like seven or eight Transformers standing around talking and there's two humans in that shot and they're conversing with the humans, but it's like, it was the opposite in the Bay movies, right? It was like, here's an entire Navy SEAL team. And then, you know, Sam Witwicky, and then there's like Bumblebee. So it was like that inverse relationship of, I think what people wanted, which is movies about the robots with a human to kind of ground them in the, in the movie. This delivers that better than any of the other ones had even the Haley Steinfeld one, because that one, like, you know, there's really only one Autobot in that movie for the basically the entire with a transformer. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that I did like, I mean, that's another thing that I kind of credit it for is like that. I don't think everybody's probably like, I don't know, thinking about as much or, or giving it credit that like you actually have this movie that kind of had human, human and transformers drama, like existing in the same, in the same space where like Optimus prime is like actually going through a thing and like kind of like learning with the humans along the way, like how to become who he needs to be and stuff like that was interesting. I look forward to getting into that because I, I have some things to say. (laughs) (laughs) Good. Yeah. Good. Um, I don't think there is much more we can say without getting into spoilers. So if you have not seen it yet, we, Ben and I are going to get into full spoilers, plot details, post credit scenes, whatever there may be. So duck out now if you have not had a chance to see the film yet. All right, Ben, I hated this portrayal of Optimus Prime as being a fan of Gen 1. This so we talk about we talked about the writer strike. We talked about the writing for this. This movie had nine, um, five at least credited screenwriters. Yeah, this movie. And this is we talked about this very briefly where Paramount does not know Lorenzo, we need to talk about what a reboot means. And if you're committing to it, we've had three Spider-Men in a decade and we're going to go for four Batman in a decade. Like seriously. So this movie somehow feels like it's a sequel to Bumblebee, but also a prequel to everything except for some massive plot elements and for that, it's a mess. Like, yeah. I completely agree with the human elements. I think Noah, I'm a fan of Anthony Ramos. I thought he was really great in Hamilton and Inside yeah. Not Inside Out. In the Heights. <laughs> very yeah, different movie. Inside out. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be very, very different. Yeah. Um, and I thought that immediately had some compelling human characters. It is certainly a step in the right direction. It helps when his mom is also Miles Morales's mom. Yes, the same that actress. was. She is having a. F- she is having a very good. Yeah. Yes. A very good couple. And she of deserves Dexter's, it. Yeah, yeah. Dexter's. Uh, Dexter's lieutenant Laguerta no. is is really killing it this week in uh, in movie theaters. And it's one of my criticisms of the Bay films is they've n- outside of I think the first two, Optimus Prime turns into this bloodthirsty, gives no craps about anybody, just violent human being, and to yeah. also. As a fan of Bumblebee, his relationship with this character seems to have happened entirely off screen. Because yes. let's get into it. Bumblebee dies. Yes. And I went, okay, we're doing Transformers can die. It happens all the time. If you haven't yeah. seen Transformers the movie, you can kill off an entire toy line. And yeah. it's the best way to do it because then you introduce yeah. Rodimus Prime and Ultra Magnus. Yeah. Uh I a big fan of Rodimus Prime. When he turns Rodimus into the Prime giant flaming camper van. Yes. Literal Very flames. Cool. Uh, it's ridiculous. And when you're voiced by Judd Nelson. But yes. so Bumblebee dies and it's this brotherhood that we've never seen on film. Yeah. Because in, if this is just a sequel to Bumblebee, Optimus shows up and he's like, hey, welcome to Earth. Or thanks for telling yeah. us to come to Earth. And it's yeah. been 10 years. They're doing the X-Men time jump. Yep. Right. Because we don't have Haley Steinfeld or John Cena. 
Yeah. Cause they're not in it. Cause we can't afford her. And so Bumblebee dies. He's like, I'm going to kill you scourge. And Ben, we spent a lot of time playing destiny to <laughs> together. Which role did Peter Dinklage sleepwalk through more? The yeah. Ghost or scourge? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Scourge was like, yeah. I mean, he might as well have just been like, I don't know, like evil, like Tyrion Lannisters. I mean, it just was Peter Dinklage talking, you know, like in a malicious, malignant voice or something like that. I it's think he put a... in more effort for Scourge, quite frankly. Yeah, I, well, I think it's hard to put in less effort than he did for, <laughs> for Destiny, given that they actually erased him from that game entirely because it was so bad. But yeah, so um, like there's these elements where obviously we're avoiding the biggest inconsistency which is one earth was a was a unicron at the end of the last yes. night and now yeah. unicron <clears throat> is the orson wells sized robot he should yes. have been and yeah one of the elements that i'm po- i'm happy about is that it seems that they're thinking this through yeah in this may be a unicron trilogy which has been done in the animated versions i've seen the version of transformers where unicron was earth and it was compelling yeah. but referencing a Marvel film that I don't think will make the episode. There's just spikes left out of that version of earth, like a hand yes. of a celestial out of the yeah. Eternals earth. Yeah. Um. So like, it's great that he looks like gen one, but man, this Optimus prime, he hates everybody except yeah. for B. Yeah. Yeah. That whole thing. Uh, so I felt like, did feel different because at the end of uh at the end of the first one or the end of bumblebee it seemed like optimus prime was kind of on board with humans like he seemed i can't remember what his lines were in the end of that but he kind of like you know was suggesting they'd found this new home and they like you know could protect these people i can't remember exactly what the lines are but it wasn't like he shows up and is like Ugh, this place is the worst <laughs> like you know we got to get out of here or something so that whole thing was a surprise that he was so cynical about humans and like i guess they just sort of were like this is a younger like not and optimus primal comments on that right like he says like this isn't the you know the optimus that i knew or you know of legend or whatever and so it's like i guess they were kind of aware of the fact that they were they were sliding off of what he is. But I think one of the things about Optimus Prime that I think is so endearing about him is he's like, he's kind of just never changed. Like the character that he was in the animated series and every movie that he was in and every like reboot and every, it's like, I remember I joined a Facebook group early on called when, you know, Facebook was young 20 years ago. It was called like every leadership lesson I needed to ever learn. I learned from Optimus Prime. And it was like, that kind of summed up my feelings about Optimus Prime is he was just like, he was just a good guy. And he like cared about his soldiers and he like would always do the right thing. And so like, I know there's versions of the character where they've explored a darker side to him or where, you know, he's not that, you know, and even some of that, the Netflix Transformers series has sort of explored that a little bit. But at the same time, like, I feel like for the movies, consistency of him just being sort of this good dude has sort of worked. And this... I appreciate what they were trying to do. Like they were trying to be like, there's got to be more layers to this guy and we kind of need him to be cynical. I don't know that it worked though. And like, I I think it kind of comes across as like, like when they have these interactions, because I mean, we should set it up that at one point in the movie, basically like Optimus has sort of aligned himself with these humans that he feels like they kind of have, he positions it as though they have, similar motives and that they need to like get this trans warp key so that Unicron doesn't come to earth. MacGuffin and then they'll sort of like, eight. exactly. And then they'll sort of like work out, you know, the nuance of their relationship. Like what you'll know, figure out, like, are they going to use the trans warp key to go back to Cybertron or like what after the fact? And Noah's concerned because he thinks if this trans warp key exists, you know, Unicron will always be a threat or whatever. And so like that dichotomy of like, like there being this tension that Optimus Prime is going to like use this key and potentially like screw Earth is a it is weird for that character. That's just like completely out of character for him. Even if he's a younger version of himself, that still felt all very forced kind of by the end of it. Like they were trying to set all that up. 
And I think you were you were mentioning killing Bumblebee. I'm pretty convinced that the only reason they kill Bumblebee is to justify why he is so hell bent on getting back to Cybertron and willing to kind of sacrifice Earth to the extent that the key existing would potentially leave Earth vulnerable. It's like you needed to kill B because then they drop this line about, well, you know, maybe the energy on Cybertron could resurrect him or something. But it's like, I don't know. Do I buy that? No, but they find this perfectly sized chunk of Energon (laughs) that can literally be his uh, his tomb. Yes, 100%. and uh, that whole like, thing was so I, I hated all of that. I mean, I as someone who kind of like, you know, went through this movie and was like, for the most part, like I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And there were things that I kind of had to set aside. The Bumblebee and Optimus Prime arc, like the that thing was very, very weird. Like it was kind of unnecessary, too, because that was time you could have probably just dedicated to like giving Rhinox a line of or something you know like Rhinox all he does is you know growl in that scene that we've all seen from the trailers and then you know I mean he's cool at the end he's like kicking ass and stuff but he's not like he didn't say anything there's no development for that he's character. the tech robot like that's his yeah. job and he's yeah. just not in it it's, <laughs> it's very weird like, I I know that there are going to be listeners saying I'm super negative on and I think I'm more disappointed by the potential for this Because there are so many opportunities for this to be interesting. And there are steps in the right direction. You're right that this is not Beast Wars. And for that, I'm grateful because I would have been much more disappointed. I'd be very curious if there was a plan to have this be a sort of Beast War trilogy. Because Unicron is not defeated at the end. Yeah. Shocker. Uh, Maybe we'll finally get Ultra Magnus in a movie. That'd be dope. I'd love to see Ultra Magnus in a movie. Because he's a cool character. Like, he's like, why? His whole purpose in the Transformers, the movie is to show why Optimus Prime is awesome because Ultra Magnus <laughs> exactly. sucks. Yeah. Right. He drops exactly, the yeah. matrix of leadership at his first opportunity. Yeah. Judd Nelson yeah. sticks in. He's like, nah, man, I got this. Yeah. That, <laughs> it's really, yeah, it's true for sure. Like we, we get the development of two of the beast wars of two of the Maximals, which I'm grateful for. I was curious if in the marketing, they were hiding the Predacons from us. I'm very yeah. grateful they were not in it because that would have been yeah. way too much. Yeah. I'm hoping there have been, I saw something briefly today that apparently Paramount might be speaking to Stephen Cable Jr. about doing the second film. If they yeah. get another one, I need to see dinosaur Megatron fight gorilla. That would be Optimus dope. Yeah. Prime Cause that would be amazing. Yeah. Ron Perlman, who was the voice of Optimus Primal in Transformers Kingdom, yeah, I think does a great job. And you're right, seeing the Transformers talk to each other when it's yeah. not zany, over the top, like shtick, Nonsense, which does yeah. still happen in one scene. And I was very disappointed it got into the movie with Mirage forgetting how to be a Transformer. Oh but yeah, yeah, yeah. These are still Bayham produced. I did yes. see that before the film yeah. started, but. Michelle Yeoh being Air Razor is awesome. Getting to, I'm very sad we did not see Rat Trap. He's my favorite yes. of the characters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're all gonna die. Would have fit perfectly in this movie yes. as Unicron is coming through his portal. Yeah, and like the one thing that I am very optimistic about that we never got in five films of the Babe Moo movies, which had a writer's room, but then it became abundantly clear Bay took every idea that they had and yes. put into each movie at a time. Yeah. That's why there's a King Arthur legend, a submarine, a time traveling robot, the Quintessons and Unicron in one movie. They're all in the last night and establishing a maximal world that may or may not have to do with time travel because of Optimus Primal's relationship with Optimus. I'm named after you. Okay. So, like, do you know about him as Orion Pax? Because that would have yeah. been his origin story. Maybe we'll get that, the o- Orion Pax, a Transformers story. Oh, no, I guess that's the one that they're doing with, with Thor, Chris Hemsworth. He gets yeah, to be that Orion Pax. Transformers Pac. 1 or whatever, which, yeah. yeah, I'm very curious. I mean, I'm very curious about that thing. Because, like, half of my love for Transformers is, like, I mean, I feel like I'm having my Mario moment or something. It's like, you know, Peter Cullen is my Optimus. Like, I don't know how you separate. Like, I get you kind of maybe need to do it at some point, but 
I think that feels more valid, in my opinion, because he said more than eight words in 30 yes. years. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. He's been doing it consistently <laughs> yeah. outside of, ironically, Beast Wars. Yes. Yeah. I think one of the things that's it's hard to explain that spectacle is coherent is a, is a massive positive. Being able to have these giant because you see it in the trailers, you see these yeah. massive fight scenes happening and understanding what is happening is fantastic. And it should be yeah. the spectacle of these giant robots fighting. I'm a little disappointed we didn't get to see some of Optimus Primal's other weapons. Yeah. And that for he sure. only transforms for one time. Yeah. Although we talk about like the Mario moment, Ron Perlman shouting maximize. Yeah. Best second of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Did you cry? Did you cry? Like I cried in the original Transformers. I, yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, it kind of all comes together. I think that final battle is actually quite good. And I think, you know, one of the things about it that like I enjoyed, we, you know, we kind of alluded to this. It's like, the my nuggets just won the nba finals flip yeah, it so. right there there yeah, it is that's it. all right <laughs> i gotta go code. yeah i gotta go um but uh you think that's yeah. a big deal the raptors winning the nba finals shut down a country <laughs> <laughs> yeah i will maybe not quebec like... maybe not quebec which is where you were when it happened but yes. the rest of the country yeah shut down. <laughs> apparently this is the first time that any or at least in a long time, a championship team has won in Denver. So like the Avalanche, when they won the Stanley Cup, it wasn't in Denver. No. Nope, Obviously, yeah. when the Broncos would win Super Bowls, they're not in Denver. The Nuggets have never or the the uh the Rockies have yeah. never won. Well, and the so, other like, Avalanche like, Stanley Cups in my head really quickly, they're always in their white jerseys, which would have yeah. meant they were away. That's away, weird. Yeah. So and this it's is the first probably time. This is the first time the same city will lose the championship within a day of each other. Yes, probably. Because there's yeah. no way. I mean, yeah. clip this if I'm wrong, but I don't see Florida Panthers winning game five. Yeah, Not no. Not a chance. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, anyway, but yeah, I just had to, I had to mark it. But the... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the final battle, it's like, there's a lot that I liked about it. I, you know, any time where it's like Optimus Prime kind of like owning it at the end, I I dig just because the, the score is soaring and, you know, you get to hear Peter Cullen like talking crap and stuff. But, but like Mirage. So there's two, there's a thing that pissed me off about this movie, and it's it is that they kill Bumblebee and then bring him back for like a, you know, a big moment. kind That's of. That's in like the gets, trailers. Yeah, which is weird. And then like, so like, yeah, I was thinking that like, you know, the entire time, if you've been paying attention to the trailers at all, that like, he hasn't done this one thing you've seen him do, but then they kill Mirage. And then we find out Mirage isn't really dead. Mirage does like a sacrifice play to save Noah. And then he's not dead. And then he converts his body, like his dying body around Noah and Noah gets like, the techno i forget what it was called in the in it's the in cartoon. transformers the movie yeah because spike gets one or no yeah, danny like, danny gets one yeah it's like techno like the techno like techno transformer suit or something like that. i forget what it's called but it's basically mega man armor and he like runs around like with little rocket pack and he you know but it's actually like i will say as kind of goofy and dumb as it was this dude was a soldier, so it kind of made a little bit of sense. And then also, like, it just made the action scene, like, much more dynamic because it kind of tied everything together. Like, he was sort of zipping around doing different things. And it, that sort of, like, brought you into some of the other micro battles that were happening. And then you get a really awesome thing at the end with him sa sort of saving Optimus Prime. And it's like a human saves Optimus Prime. And that sort of solidifies Optimus Prime's realization that humans are selfless as well and stuff. But I did think that that as goofy as that was, and as much as some people are going to probably poo poo it, it added something new to what is usually a pretty paint by numbers finale <coughs> scene in a Transformers movie, which is giant robots start punching each other. Optimus's axes come out <coughs> and that kind of stuff. So I did appreciate that for what it was. So we're go I'm going to lead into one of the things a lot of people have been reacting to for this, 
and the so I'd seen we there's not a good screen grab of the suit that Noah gets from Mirage. And so I, I was, I, I was aware this was going to happen. I'm like, okay, I don't know how, like the trailers make it look like Mirage is like, here you go. And then he just gets a Mega Man suit. Uh, but because we didn't get a clear look at it, I was like, okay, all right, I'm interested in this. There is, this is established in the Transformers canon. One thing as a longtime fan of Transformers, this film is certainly respectful of the canon. Which is ironic after the review that was last week, but yes, 100%. In me- so not knowing what I'm going to get to as a massive reveal, watching the movie, I went, man, that looks a lot like the accelerator suit in the first GI Joe movie, Rise of the Cobra. <laughs> like that's, that's true. Cool. I had not even, I had not even thought about that, but that's true. Which is the most ridiculous? I mean, that movie is just a cartoon that happens to have real people in it, yeah. and. So that's hilarious to me. And then again, I had seen Kofi's tweet like, man, if you grew up in the 80s, blah, and I'm like, oh, in my head, for some reason, it was like Rodimus Prime or Alter Magnus, like something Transformers that we had never seen from before, which is minimal yes. at this point. Or like, I wasn't even thinking, no, what happens is the G.I. Joes also exist. So yes. my real question is, does Cobra exist as well? They have yeah. to. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was confused about this. I guess, like, I read something today. They did an interview with, like, Entertainment Weekly or one of the trades. <clears throat> and they were saying that they got, that this was this big secret. And, like, most of the actors didn't even know. And, like, it took, like, the director a long time to be able to actually, like, get that approved. And they don't even really totally know where it's, like, headed. They were saying that the character that Michael Kelly plays might not actually be a dude named Burke. Like it could be that character evolves to be, you know, ex GI Joe or something like that. But I did like the idea that the Transformers tech might be kind of what like fuels the Joe's like arsenal. So like the idea that they studied like C- Cybertronian tech, because you see that, that ship. They've had 10 the- years. Yeah, exactly. So I liked that idea of kind of like thinking back on all the crazy vehicles I had as a kid with G.I. Joe that like sort of the way that some of those vehicles kind of morphed or changed. Like if that was Transformers tech, that would sort of make sense in a way that it didn't make sense when they were doing the actual movies Mm -hmm. with The Rock and with, you know, Channing and stuff like that. Channing for the five seconds he was in. uh... Yeah. What was it? retaliation yeah retaliation Retaliation. because rise of cobra was the first one yeah great first trailer for retaliation with a a sick version of um it was it icky thump no i can't remember what it was but i know yeah yeah um it was yeah that was a good trailer but yeah i'm i'm very curious like what their their end goal is with some of that but i mean i'm kind of here for it like i don't know they may end up ruining transformers by shoving gi joe into it or like well, Maybe we've had an cool. army in five movies, so like, what's really going to be different? Yes, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, no, that's I totally mean, true. I think that's one of the aspects that I'm excited for, and it's ironic because, well, you were writing for it, and I was watching all the films where so many different franchises were trying to. But wait, there's more. Yes, and as jaded as I should be, having sat yes. through the dark universes, and w- I mean whatever it may have been. Yeah. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man two, as we talked about at the beginning of the podcast, being a great example of, uh, but wait, there's more. I think establishing something different with the beast Wars characters automatically means there is stuff to explore. That is different. I'm hoping if we do get a sequel that uh, for instance, if we get Megatron or Waspinator, I really wanted to shout terrorize uh, yeah. Scorponok or like Black Arachnia. Like we get the Predacon versions of the villains and yeah. we don't as much as I would love being a fan of Gen 1, seeing Gun Op- Megatron, having spent yeah. five movies, I guess four, if you include Galvatron, which you would yeah. as a cube bot. Yes. That the the yeah. possibilities for this seem much more interesting, which seven 
films into Transformers I didn't think I'd say. So that's yeah. a positive for me. Yeah. They seem to suggest in this interview too that like we've had a lot of these movies set on Earth. And so it kind of suggested that if like when G.I. Joe and Transformers team up that like maybe they'd be taking the fight to somebody or they'd have to go on a mission, you know, to probably get whatever other stupid MacGuffin they're going to have in that movie. But that would prevent Unicron or whoever else from showing up, but that it would potentially take them into space, which like G.I. Joe's in space with Transformers would be kind of dope if they're facing off with just like you said, like the actual Predacons and stuff like that. But or that's or on the other uh, flip side of that, Transformers. I don't know what to call it. Uh, depth of the Predacons or something. Yeah, is about <laughs> the remaining Maximals fighting off a Predacon threat on some other planet. So that way, yeah, yeah, we actually get <clears throat> what we've talked about, which is a Transformers movie with no humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, something like that could be really cool for sure. If you know, and if they call like Optimus or those guys to come help or something, so they're not just like abandoning every character they've set up or whatever, but they, you know, they get them off. I think they will get off Earth at least for some of it. That's it was in Mirage as they go through space. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the other thing we didn't talk about is like there's a post post or post credit scene. That's a pre credit scene, the G.I. Joe thing. But the post credit scene, we find our mid credit scene, we find out like Mirage, he like fixed mirage so the second transformer you know two out of three autobot deaths or not autobot but good guy deaths are wiped away in this movie by just like you know stupid air razor r.i.p she's not she's not coming back but they can't afford michelle yo for this <clears throat> yeah yeah 100 percent uh... Yeah, she was a thousand percent cast after everything everywhere all at once yes, came out. 100%. And I would be willing to bet a substantial amount of money that it was recorded with unfortunately a scratch voice actor. Yes, one hundred percent. Get the celebrity in, which is Yeah. yeah I, it's probably true, yeah. The um Yeah, no, I mean I I don't know. I think I liked it more than you did, which is not surprising because I like I have a soft spot for this franchise, but I also I mean, it is kind of like, I think your your analysis of it, that it's like a lot of the good things about the Bay movies, but also for some reason has some of the weird baggage from the Bay movies is like a really accurate, it's like it takes some of the stuff that I think they did well in, in Bumblebee, kind of the like period era, like the music, the the atmosphere. Like, it did feel very, like, 90s. I, you know, obviously, as, like, a person who lived in New York for a long time and a fan of hip-hop, like, I liked sort of the hip-hop vibe and, like, all the, you know, Brooklyn Brooklyn love and stuff like that. But, I mean, there is still a lot of just ridiculous, <clears throat> you know, nonsense that kind of is, like, more the Michael Bay stuff than it was the Bumblebee stuff, mm -hmm. I feel like. Like, it it sort of loses some of that like like bumblebee could have been like in another universe that could have been like an oscar nominated you know movie or something i'm not saying like oscar nominated but like it's a complete drama sort of smaller scale more intimate this kind of throws that out like that's the part it throws out it doesn't it's not trying to tell an intimate story it's trying to tell actually a very big story with multiple factions and the biggest transformer character in the entire franchise, like, you know, zooming in at the end and stuff. So I'm trying to think, is Primus bigger? Oh, I mean, Primus might be bigger. That's true. Primus might yeah. be bigger. If we, if yeah. we end this trilogy with Primus <laughs> fighting ultra, not ultra, like this Unicron, it was yeah. worth it. Like I, I know I sounded negative and I think it's more so based on the, I guess potential that this could have had. Like yeah. it, I almost wish we had waited, I guess five years is a long time still, yeah. but to establish something that feels like we are moving in a different direction. Yeah, and as yeah. like we talked about, there are certainly elements that they've done that. Yeah. Like if you asked me, Hey, want to see like Transformers eight and it's this, I'd be like, yeah, I'll, I'll see and watch it, which is something to be said because I left last night and went, I ain't watching another one of these in <laughs> never watched, for a long yeah, time. Never and I again. didn't. I watched yeah, Bumblebee yeah. on Prime probably two years after. Yeah. Because I was so disinterested in this franchise. Yeah. So the fact that I feel reinvigorated with 
positive possibilities is something I did not expect. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, I think you're right, though. I think it feels more like a Bay film than the Bumblebee film, which I think is like disappointing to some people because that felt like such a fresh reset. And like you were saying, I mean, I, I got in a fight about this on Twitter this week because <clears throat> Kasdan, who, you know, manages Screen Rant Social and like I used to joke about firing all the time, like he, like him and I are good friends. And he was asking like, if he needed to see the Bay films before he went to see this. And I said, I said, no, I mean, it serves as like a prequel, like you need to see Bumblebee. And then it sort of serves as a prequel to the other ones. And people were like jumping down my throat and they were saying, no, it's like, it's a reboot. They said it's a reboot. <clears throat> and I did my homework on this and they like never said it was a reboot. The closest anybody came to saying that it was like a reboot that that can make that decision. Like the director of this film said that, that it's, you know, it's kind of rebooted the franchise and stuff, but like he, I mean, he can say whatever he wants, but if Lorenzo Di Bonaventura and Michael Bay say, well, no, it didn't. We want it to tie into these other movies eventually. Like it doesn't matter what he says, like they, they get to ultimately do that and until they say that like, and Bonaventura has been super cagey about it because understandably he doesn't want to commit one way or the other. So that's why he's like, well, yeah, it's kind of, but it's not totally. And what I think the closest thing that he said was that Bumblebee had like established a new universe to tell Transformers stories. But like the way he was talking about that was like, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean like it's a universe. It means like it's a new space in which you can tell Transformers stories. It wasn't like, he wasn't talking about it as like the way we as fans are like, oh, is it, you know, universe 1066 or something like that? He's talking about it as like, this is a new corner of like the Physical the world space. Where, exactly, where we can like make money. That's like what he was saying. He's like, <laughs> he wasn't making it because he since said, yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah, there's some things that kind of changed, but like, you know, you never know. So like, I'm not willing to to commit to the idea that it's a full reboot at this point. It will be nuts if they try and tie it all together because it won't make any sense. It is effectively a reboot, but is the I would stuff be gone? lying I if I didn't say I would love to see that more so because <laughs> yeah. it would be like watching a car accident in slow motion. Yes, like, the bridge, just... the bridge story that they would have to tell in order to like like retcon everything that happened in these movies just to tie them to movies that are worse or something, you know, like decisions they made in genuinely bad movies in like the fourth and the fifth ones. I'm trying to think of <clears throat> what but... other, like um, per, it would be an American in like human history. They could use to completely bastardize this universe. Yes, yeah. Where it's like yeah. we had Lance Armstrong. No, not yeah. Lance, ne not Neil Armstrong. The other one. Yes. Who else was on the moon? I should know. Buzz that. Aldrin? Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin yeah. was in Transformers 3 because <laughs> yes. he went to the moon because the Ark was there. What if yes. they take like Neil deGrasse Tyson? He actually traveled through time. Yes. Yeah. In the, in the, the Transformers. It's all, it's all messed up anyway, though, because like, I mean, the Maximals are talking about how they are from a different time and space and like kind of a different universe and stuff. It's like, but they never really elaborate on like, how that works, like if this trans warp key would actually allow Optimus and the Transformers to like travel through time and space, like they don't ever like say exactly how that works, even though like I know in the in the Beast Wars, you know, in Beast Wars, it's like they are from a different time and space. But like it's kind of set up in that movie where in this one, it's just like a throwaway line where it's like we're from a different time and space. But they're never like really like this is how the mechanics of that actually yeah. like well, work. But it, it's funny because arguing that this is or isn't the Bay films themselves don't fit with their own timeline. Bumblebee yes, killed Hitler. Time. Yes. And yeah. <laughs> Optimus Prime's yeah. first time on Earth in the first film is his yeah. first time on Earth where like none of it. The. Like Bumblebee was a more abundantly clear to me that they were more <laughs> regardless of if they've addressed it, because uh, this is just this is my personal opinion that yes. they only <clears throat> they, they, Bumblebee works be on until you get to that post credit scene. There is yes, a reason yeah. Bumblebee turns into that like 72 Camaro 
yes. at the end of yeah. Bumblebee. But then continuing that yes. post credit scene of no, they've been on Earth since the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's so yeah, it, it is doesn't weird. fit. Yeah. It is that I mean, and that's like that's your evidence right there, right? Anybody who says like, oh, this was always gonna be a reboot, it's like, well, no, obviously, like they were setting up some of these things that like appear later on too and stuff. It's just yeah, it's I don't know. It I need a like, scene yeah. where it doesn't where it turns out they are prequels and Optimus Prime gets taken all of them get taken back by the Quintessons and they just like <laughs> yeah, erase, erase his memory. memory. Yeah. You were never on Earth and you always yeah. look like a guy Fietti truck. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The uh I'll say this too, like as far as villains go, and you're talking about Scourge and just the voice performance. I actually I am... loved it. I I, I was only <clears throat> being critical of that i yeah. thought it finally was somebody who wasn't megatron that was yes. threatening yeah which was great the, the thing that drove me nuts about it though is he's still a f- giant dump truck though or not a dump truck a like he's like a big truck. Mega, they were basically like megatron in these movies is either a jet plane or he's a, a tank. you know he's like a diesel truck yeah i guess he yes i guess he yeah i guess he had his like time as a tank too but but he was like at one point, like a, when he was Galvatron or whatever, he was like a. They had him as like a diesel truck that was kind of like Dark Optimus, and then he was like you know kind of a beat up truck in Dark of the Moon, and like then they had a they're Mad like, Max okay, Scourge, uh, yes, on. yeah, with his yeah with his hood, but like they're like Scourge, like what should this guy be? What should this guy be? like a truck like Optimus Prime, except like kind of like you know Mad Max style or something. I was like. Dude, come on. Like, people are either sports cars or they're like trucks in this franchise. We've or they're dumb trucks. We've never done Nemesis Prime. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, they they tried to do that with him in the sixth movie, right? Or the the fifth movie. Yeah. Which where, came like, out. Optimus this, was evil or whatever. Yeah. Same time Fate of the Furious <clears throat> came out. Our yes, favorite yeah. heroes were now fighting yeah, against us. Yeah. And they manipulated the trailers and stuff for Optimus where it looked like he was like slaughtering Autobots when it was like all they did was change his eye color. But and he was slaughtering Decepticons. But yeah, you're evil, apparently, if your eyes are green. I don't know what yeah, you're I wanted to see more of uh, of the Terror Cons, too, though. I felt like Scourge was good, but the like the one that was kind of like an like a sports car and was like sort of a ninja and stuff that was taken on Cheetor and stuff. I, I wanted to see more of like Nightbird. that character. Too. Nightbird, that's right. Yeah, like, I felt like they kind of, you know, I don't know. I mean, obviously the focus was on Scourge, and I, I thought Scourge was good enough. I mean, he was brutal enough that it was like, you know, you felt like he could kind of, like, go as toe-to-toe with Optimus, which was, you know, not a lot of people have been able to do that. So that's, it felt like there was a real threat there, but. I will know this is not a reboot, or this is a reboot, if in the next one, and the following, I'm assuming wrapping up this trilogy, if Bumblebee is finally allowed to talk. <laughs> Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> yeah, that ugh. that continues to be just like a WTF. Type Dylan thing O'Brien too, showed up like, at the end of uh, Bumblebee and then they're like, no, oh, he's yeah. going to go shoot Bullet yeah. Train in three years. It's, it's, yeah, he's going to go see a bunch of movies. And Aren't, they uh, have to all the, be 90s movies, right? Like it's it's so yes, it's, parts of it I can understand, but it's the way they vote. I don't know. I feel like this is a rabbit hole. Yeah, we could continue to fall down. No, I mean, it's the plot holes in the movie are just like... I would recommend I mean, seeing it, even after everything I've said. Uh, if Yeah, I think I, I think yeah, it's fun. It is, like, I think I saw this, I, I saw this on Monday, and then I saw The Flash the next day. And I can say, you know, objectively, without spoiling anything, The Flash is like, you know, regardless of how people feel about it, like Ezra and stuff like that, that's going to be part of the conversation. I get that. But if you're looking at the movie just like entirely objectively as like, what is this as a movie? It is immensely entertaining and kind of puts this thing to shame. But going into The Flash, I was actually kind of like, man, I've seen like, I saw a good movie last night. Like, I actually really enjoyed that, like Rise of the Beast. I thought that was fun. It was stupid. There was a lot of stuff I can nitpick, but like cool action, characters I liked. Like, it was still, you know, it was still like a better movie than a lot of them were, I think. But there's also a lot of stuff that, you know, we had fun nitpicking, which is kind of just how it happens on these podcasts. Anyway. I think like, I'll enjoy revisiting it more, knowing now what it is. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Like yeah, watching yeah. Bumblebee, no, I, think this, so. I think will be satisfying. And hopefully, as mentioned yeah. several times by me, if it builds to something exciting, that's 
that's all that you can hope for. Well, I won't keep you for much longer. I know you're going to celebrate the Denver Nuggets winning their NBA championship. Yes. As you've mentioned, it was a perfect segue that I completely ignored. Uh, next yeah. week's review will be of The Flash, your most anticipated yep. movie of the year. My, oh, no, yep. where's my prop? It's over here. Mine comes you got out a prop? at the end of the month. Ah, yes. So, well, I'm seeing that this week, I think. I'm jealous. I'm Thursday, wearing an Indiana yeah. Jones fedora for our listeners. Um, ben, thank you so much for being on the show. I know I've You're been welcome, man. badgering you to be on the podcast. No, I, it's, I, I wish we had done it sooner. I, yeah, it's been, a, I mean, you know, like, you know, kind of my personal. I do very much so. You know, left the industry for a bit, came back. Like, so I. You are I'm the sort of, Al Pacino meme. That's been that's your it. career yeah, in the last Pull me back in years. every time. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I they missed me back in. podcast X episode, which you, as mentioned at the very beginning, you were the host of with Rob and special yep. guest Kofi, Kofi Outlaw. Yep. And so I look forward to whatever you guys do for your next episode. I may or may not have a guest for my Flash episode. And then after that, it's just going to be me. So hopefully you're listening to this podcast for me uh, <laughs> at the Flash and then I'm going to, I think the following week, I'm going to see Elementals. I cannot fit two movies in in one week, even though I'm seeing two this week. But when the wife wants to see a movie, I'm going to take her. So I recommend. Elemental, I'm curious. I'm curious about that because I feel like people have like really, really crapped on that movie just because it doesn't, it kind of like looks sort of like inside out. And then people are like wondering, it's like Romeo and Juliet, like, but I don't know. I mean, Pixar, like very rarely makes bad movies even a, like it's probably going to be f- a bad pixar film like if you're looking at the bar they set for themselves is still better than yeah. most kids films 100 percent. and like as yeah. people with young children there's a lot of bad yeah. kids movies. yes 100 percent. yeah i'm becoming exposed to what is out there in kids entertainment at this point and like i yeah it's horrifying for sure so i recommend any- showing your kids good things because then you get to like yeah it. As well. That's it. And you get a treat, a little treat for you too. It's the best. But yeah, man. Go ahead. Sorry. Good. No, no, no. You go ahead. Revisiting stuff from your childhood has been my favorite part of like a content yes. sounds so jaded, but like television and film getting to yeah. go through the Disney Renaissance with melody the first time. Yeah. Uh, if I could bottle that, I'd be a billionaire because it's, there's so, so I have much to, joy. I have to send you a video after this. I have magically, got my two-year-old Flynn into Star Wars. Nice. And so we have like Star Wars books we read, like just they're like little books for kids. And then I have all my old Disney Infinity figures Mm -hmm. from those like the little, because I I thought the art style on those figures were so cool. It was awesome. Even though like, like that was genuinely one of the best things about that was like, I got all the Marvel ones and I got, just because I thought the art style was so cool. And so I've given her like, I have like 30 of these star Wars ones. And so I gave her like three or four of them and she's upset. She carries them everywhere. And she's like, Darth Vader, Darth Vader pushes. And when we like, I lay her down at night and stuff, like we go through everybody that loves her and she'll be like, and Darth Vader and Luke and Ray. And like, I, I don't know how I magically did it, but it I just like, happens. It's the weirdest yeah. thing. The sort like, yeah. Sawyer's obsessed with Spider-Man. And one of my favorite things I mentioned it on last week's episode is he wears a Spider-Man costume that was my first Spider-Man costume. Oh, that's And dope. he loves yeah, Spider-Man. Cool. Unfortunately, right now, he's into Spidey and his amazing friends, which oh, okay. does the yeah. cardinal sin of calling Miles Spin as opposed to Spider-Man. Oh, gross. It's, I didn't even know that about that. It, it she has some of those plates. Yeah. It, yeah, she has some of the plates, but I haven't watched the show. That part's fun. <clears throat> and Melody, she's seen A New Hope because she's five. She's seen A New Hope. I don't know if she's ready for... Empire. Yeah, Empire. We, we yeah, did yeah, play then. together. Slash, she had a controller disconnected, as you would typically do if you were a sibling, uh, through mm-hmm. Lego Skywalker Saga. So she's seen oh, that's cool. the original trilogy in that element. But yes, that's cool. Uh, ben, you're uh, where Aside, are you working yeah. now? <laughs> so I am with Static Media, who owns, uh, who manages Slash Film and Looper. Predominantly, those are the sites that your your listeners would probably know the most. So yeah, Ben is on That's Twitter. He's an act. Our first conversation ever. I don't know if you remember this about anything on Twitter. This is ten plus years ago. Was about <laughs> Transformers. Really? Yeah, it was. That's it funny. had to do that. with. I think it was Revenge of the Fallen. 
Oh God. Yeah. So it's, we're, it's, we <laughs> Tell are, me I wasn't circle. defending it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We have, yeah. Well, th- dude, it will not be as long this time before we do this again. I had a good time and, uh, it was just good to catch up and talk to you and talk, talk about something that I liked more than you, but didn't love. <laughs> well, you know what? I, maybe the shoe will be on the other foot. Cause I can guarantee that podcast X will not do doctor who stuff. So that's true. When you need to talk Doctor Who, because we are getting the 60th yes. anniversary in in November, we have. Let's that. say if let's say if I do not come on before that, and hopefully I will be on before that if life permits, that I will commit to that one for sure, because I will definitely want to be talking well, some Doctor to Who. To quote your one of your favorite films of all time to wrap up the podcast, life uh uh finds a way. Finds a way. Yeah, that's it. 